Hey everyone, Pastor Tommy McMurtry here from Liberty Baptist Church in Rock Falls with another Spirit of Liberty broadcast. And this afternoon, I want to talk about manliness and promoting manliness while raising your boys. So this is specifically kind of geared towards dads who are raising sons. And we have got to promote manliness today like never before because... It being effeminate is being promoted like never before. And I'm here today to tell you that being effeminate is not okay. It is a very serious sin. And it is something that um, is, you know, is becoming more and more common. And we've really got a culture war that's going on. And I'm seeing a lot of Christians not really saying anything about it. Not really doing anything about it. Because the things that we actually should be promoting, you know, and the things that are going on in this culture, I mean, you are villainized so much if you actually speak against it and if you get specific. And we've got more and more, quote unquote, religious people who get really bent out of shape when we get specific and say, you know, this is effeminate, you know, that, and they know being effeminate is bad because it's spelled out in the Bible. But when you start getting specific about that, then you just get called a legalist because you can't show a verse in the Bible against skinny jeans or something like that. But, you know, we are, to as Christians, supposed to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And as the cultures change, you know, there are going to be, uh, be you know, certain sins are going to manifest themselves differently. And I believe that there have always been and always will be men of God who call these things out and are criticized for it. And, uh, you know, and back in uh, the early days and back in my, my dad's day, uh, you know, the things that they would be naming uh, would be different. A lot of preachers get a lot of criticism today uh, because they're known for preaching against things like wired rim glasses and pleated pants. And, uh, you know, we, we hear that referenced all the time in the IFB world. And we always know who they're talking about, too. Uh, but you know what? Let me just say this, all right? While some, you know, when those guys started preaching against that stuff, they were right to do that. They were preaching against the cultural trends of that time. They were not wrong doing that. Now, some of those guys, um, they kept talking about it even when it was no longer a cultural trend. And, um, and it kind of made them look weird to a lot of people but you know at the end of the day i'm thankful for them i understand what they were trying to do you know we had um in the ifb world uh back in the 70s and the 80s there was a lot of preaching against shorts okay and the preaching that they did it was against shorts that was the you know that was the word that was what they were preaching against and you know what they should have been preaching against the shorts of that day because those things were like Daisy Dukes. It was disgusting, the shorts that guys were wearing during that time. They should have been ashamed of themselves, going around showing their thighs the way they were. That was disgusting. That was wrong. You know, and covering your, uncovering your thigh, we see in the Bible, is nakedness. And you know what? Thank God for all those preachers that were preaching against the shorts. The problem is, shorts became the sin instead of exposing the thigh and nakedness and as a result of that you know when the culture changed and shorts started getting longer and longer to where they were actually decent to where they were not uh exposing nakedness and things like that some preachers kept preaching against shorts because shorts became the sin uh in, in their mind and you know and as a result some of them look a little goofy now when they're you know preaching against these things because well they're not nakedness anymore. Of course, we're going back to that, all right? And unfortunately, I think we might need to have a revival of preaching against shorts, but let's get it right this time and not talk about shorts, but let's just talk about exposing the thigh. Let's talk about nakedness and how wrong that is and about being effeminate too because the guys too wearing the short shorts are usually uh, the more effeminate types, the curly-haired Zoomer types. Uh, it's just absolutely, absolutely revolting. But, but at the end of the day, you know, we preach against nakedness. You know, we preach against being effeminate. Uh, those are sins. 
But when we get specific about how those things are manifesting themselves, we need to understand that uh, we're not, we shouldn't try creating new sins as a result of that. And again, shorts is just the name of a garment. You know, in the Bible, the priest garments, they wore linen breeches, which we would compare to breeches or pants. But did you know that those linen breeches went from the loins to the thighs? Now, today we call that shorts. You know, so to get today, a lot of IFB guys would preach against those, you know, but again, it's not about the word or the name of the clothing. It's about their function and, you know, clothing, uh, it serves a function. It's supposed to cover nakedness, you know, for one, and it is supposed to be gender specific is another thing. And we're seeing more and more, uh, clothing companies that are putting out more gender neutral stuff. To try to, I don't know, make the trannies feel normal or something. But it's not going to work. It's not okay. Uh, things ought to be, spe you know, gender specific. And we've got to teach this. And, you know, you're going to get villainized for it. But we cannot stop doing it. The guys in the past got villainized. We're going to get villainized. And I'm, I'm not going along with this. Because I'm seeing more and more of these preachers, too, who are getting scared of, you know, getting specific about sin preaching against this kind of stuff and you know and they will they'll get real general but they never want to get specific and i'm seeing what they're posting on social media from their churches and their youth groups and i'm looking at their youth groups and it's just absolutely revolting the way these guys are looking these things are not okay they've never been okay they never will be okay i don't care what our culture does and if we're going to keep this from happening to our boys, we are going to have to make a conscious effort to keep these things from them because our culture is going to keep promoting this effeminacy junk. And it's just, it's not okay. It's not okay in my house. It's not okay in the church. And uh, we need to stand up against these things. And so... I, I do want to point out, we're, we're going to go to some scriptures on this, but I, I want to start out pointing out a passage in Matthew chapter 11. I like this passage right here uh, because one, it, re it reveals some things that have not changed. You know, it also reveals some things too that kind of have changed, um, you know, culturally. But in Matthew 11, in verse 7, it says, and they, As they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. Okay? And what, what's he talking about there? What's a reed shaken with the wind? All right. He's basically asking kind of a rhetorical crush, question here. You guys didn't go out to go see, listen to some guy who's just blown about with every wind of doctrine. You went out to see a man. You went out to see a man's man. He said, but what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. That wasn't John the Baptist, folks. John the Baptist, he was a man that, you know, wore, uh, you know, camel's hair and a leather girdle. He ate locusts and wild honey. He lived out in the wilderness. We know he was, you know, he's, he's portrayed as kind of like a wild man. Somebody who is not afraid to call things out. Somebody who wasn't afraid to call the Pharisees uh, a bunch of generation of vipers. Who wasn't afraid to call out the king and to tell, tell him it was not lawful for him to have his brother's wife. A guy who ended up being martyred for his faith. And Jesus, basically, when he's asking these questions, these are kind of uh, you know, rhetorical questions here. Obviously, they didn't go out to see a guy like that because nobody wants to go see a guy like that. Nobody wants to go see some little pansy blown around with the wind. Nobody wants to go look at a guy wearing soft raiment. And notice what it says, Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. And so uh, that term, uh, soft raiment, you know, this is... Uh, if you look up some of the commentaries and definitions on this, this is a man of feeble and effeminate character, unable to bear trials and hardships. And folks, we have these guys out there. They're all over the place right now. You can just look at them and you can tell they could never handle any hardships. They could never handle being in a wilderness. You see these little gamer type boys that they go out in the sun for five minutes and they look like they're about to pass out from heat exhaustion. It's like they've never done any work in their life. That is not okay. It is not okay for you to raise a fat little gamer that's incapable of going outside and doing manual labor. And, you know, and you can talk about all his disabilities and things. You know, you know he has these disabilities because 
you have coddled him so much because you have not challenged him. You've not made him do anything. You've allowed him to stuff his face with junk and to sit around watching TVs and playing video games all day. That's not okay. Uh, another thing in the commentary here it's about the soft raiment is the kind of raiment denoted was the light, thin clothing worn by effeminate persons. It was made commonly of fine linen and was worn chiefly for ornament. Uh, Christ asks them whether they were attracted by anything like that. He says that the desert was not a place to expect it. In the palaces of kings, in the court of Herod, it might be expected, but not in the place where John was. This kind of clothing was an emblem of riches, splendor, effeminacy, feebleness of character. He meant to say that John was a man of a different stamp, coarse in exterior, hardy in character, firm in his virtue, fitted to endure trials and privations, and thus qualified to be the forerunner of the toiling and suffering Messiah. You know, God didn't pick an effeminate dude to be his forerunner. And he's telling these people, you didn't go out to see somebody like that. You know why? Because culturally back then, and it should be that way today, nobody cares about the effeminate, soft, good-for-nothing, just absolute queer bait types. They are disgusting. They are revolting to normal men. And you got to understand, this is being promoted. And, and the television. Listen, you wonder where your kids get the ideas for these weird clothing ideas they come up with the weird hairdos that they come up with they're watching television characters they're watching singers you know a lot may you know maybe watching athletes at least usually if they're watching athletes some trends come from athletes and those typically are a little more manly because you got to be somewhat manly to be an athlete but a lot of your guys are not even watching that they're they're looking at the singers you know they're looking at the I don't even know who the singers are right now, but uh, I guarantee you, you look up who the top, you know, pop singers are that young people are listening to today, and I guarantee you they're going to have a Zoomer perm. I guarantee you they're going to look effeminate, and they're going to wear queer clothing, soft clothing. And so again, this soft clothing that he's speaking of right here, you know, is this a verse that proves that you know it's a sin to wear the type of clothing? That's described there. I don't think it's necessarily doing that, but it was showing how in that day, how effeminacy was manifested. And it is, it's different today. What he's describing right here, I don't see anyone uh, wearing anything that specific today. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some comparable things, but either way, um, it is going to look different today. But you know what? Normal people can see it. Normal people can put two and two together and say, hey, you know, guys who typically wear the short pink shorts are typically pretty effeminate. You know, they, you know, the guys who, you know, do their hair a certain way, wear the queerings and things like that. You know, there's something, uh, there's something wrong with them. Guys who talk like women, you know, the, you know, you know, what is it about being a homo that makes you have to talk with a lisp? You know, what is that? You know, dads, you need to teach your boys to talk like men. You need to teach them to dress like men. You need to show them what it is. And so you have to stop allowing society to do this for you. Because I'm telling you right now, if you're not actively doing this as a father, someone's doing it for you. And you've got to teach your boys to dress like men. And one, one of the best ways to do that and to get your boys to... Uh, dress like men is you've got to point them to real men you know and um said everybody has role models to a certain extent who are your boys role models who are the what what kind of men do they look up to because i'm telling you right now the kind of men that they're going to look up to uh, are the ones that are promoted around them and lifted up so are you doing that? Are you lifting up any type of man? Are you are you showing them what it is? Or are you allowing the television to do that? And too many parents are letting the television raise their children. You know, uh, if, you know, if your children in a public school, they're gonna. Have, I mean, not you know, being manly, it's it's frowned on today. It's called toxic. And I did a program a while back about toxic masculinity. 
Uh, you do not want people feeding your boys that trash. And you do not want them falling for it. You need to teach them how to dress like a man. And so you need to put you know, manly things in front of them. You need to set an example of that. And, I, and you've got to keep the effeminate junk away from them. If they're watching that stuff, it's going to rub off on them. It's it's just the, it's the way it works. And so if you're letting them watch all the latest shows that are coming out on television, listening to all the uh, hip singers that are out there, they're going to want to do the same stuff. You've got to point them to the right kind of people. And you know Jesus, he's literally he he pointed people to John the Baptist. He looked at him as you know he you lifted him up as an example. Because he was a good example of what a man is. And you've got to, as a father, you've got to point your children to the kind of men that you want them to be. You know, godly men. And uh, and I'm not even going to just say pastors. There's some pastors that are effeminate that are out there. They have no character. But you know what? There's good ones out there too. You ought to point them to them. But not even just pastors. Hopefully you go to a church that has some good men in it. You know, and... Uh, that have men who are hard workers, that are providers, that are faithful husbands. You need to promote that kind of man to him. You need to lift up that kind of guy. And you know what else you need to do too? You've got to judge those who are doing wrong in these areas. And, you know, I want a son who is going to be uh, a hard worker, one who's going to be responsible, who's going to pay his bills, who's going to take care of his wife, who's going to love, honor, and cherish his wife and be faithful to that wife. And so you know who I'm not gonna lift up to him? Rappers. I'm not I'm not gonna lift up a culture. I'm not gonna allow a culture to be promoted in my house that glorifies violence, that glorifies being a thug, that glorifies, you know, just uh, you know, not working hard. And the the rap lifestyle, it is. It's a, they're a bunch of worthless human beings that are not what a Christian should be. And so, you know, I'm not going to promote men like that. Men who are into that kind of thing typically struggle with drugs. They typically struggle with, uh, you know, how they treat women. They struggle with the law. What? That's what that culture promotes. And they typically dress a certain way. You, you, can, tell, uh, you can tell by looking at them. And so, you know, I grew up, you know, my dad made fun of those people. You know, we called the saggy britches guys, you know, we called it, you know, he'd call it droopy drawers and stuff like that. We make all kinds of jokes about it. You know why? Because it is a joke. Listen, if you're out there sagging your britches, okay, you are a joke. You know what? I'll, I point at that stuff when we're driving around and my kids and we laugh at it. You know why? I'm teaching them. They should be ashamed of that. And you know what else? They, they should be ashamed of droopy pants. They should be ashamed of skinny jeans. And we're, you know, we're going to point that out. I've pointed out how guys who show up to work in skinny jeans at factory jobs never last. I've seen that. You know, you can they they just don't do it. And it's you know why is it because it's so hard to work in skinny jeans? No, but the character of the of a person who dresses like that is usually effeminate and they can't handle hard labor. They can't do it. And so they're going to go they're going to quit and try to see if they can't make it being a YouTuber or a TikToker or something like that. Because they're not capable of real work. You know, they're very self-obsessed, you know, narcissistic type people. They're not going to be able to handle somebody telling them what to do. They're not going to be able to handle somebody yelling at them. They can't handle those kind of things. So, um, you know, you've got to, you've got to, you know, there is, there's a, there's a type of people. Have you ever noticed too the difference between the way your typical Democrat crowd protesters dress? For one, the women it's horrible. A lot of times they don't dress. Same thing with guys. Just, you know, absolutely disgusting what's going on in these protests and things people are doing. But then you see some kind of right-wing protest, right-wing rally. You know, it's guys, you can tell by looking at them. They're like working class. You know, they dress like truck drivers. You know, they're wearing car hearts, whatever. You know, they're wear typically wearing some kind of work clothes. Why? Because that's, that's what they have because that's what they do. And there is a, you can look at any crowd out there protesting and you can get an idea if they're for the right or the left just by how they look. So um, you got to get them pointing 
at the right people. Because the thing about Hollywood, too, you know, they don't portray these people for what they really are. You know, when they're promoting, you know, when they have these guys on there dressed effeminate and all that, you know, there there is there's a false perception of a lot of things out there. I mean, good night in Hollywood, they've got women beating up guys all the time. You know, that weigh two, three times more than them. That's not reality. But you know, Hollywood, you think that's that's the way it is. And these effeminate types, they are. They're not. They're not capable of anything. And so you've got to teach your boys to look to the right kind of people to dress like a man. And, and the best way to do it is to get them patterning their life after real men. Uh, you need to teach them to act like men. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, talking about the wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Hey, you need to teach your boys to be the protector. But you know, one of the ways that we protect and one of the ways that we promote an attitude of being protective is you, you, you teach them to be tough. It instills a confidence in them. You know, you let them learn how to fight. You, you know, you go ahead and promote strength. You know, have them exercise, have them lift weights, have them do these things. Muscles is a good thing. Muscles is something that, that you ought to promote. You know what else you ought to promote with your boys? Weapons. Teach them how to use them and teach them how to respect those weapons and how to use them in the right way that they are not for destruction. They are for protection. And sometimes, you know, you might have to destroy some things to be protective. But at the end of the day, you know, the, the people that are going around shooting these places up, they're not the ones being taught this attitude. They're not. The, it's not the right wingers that are doing these things. It's the left. Pretty much every time it's the left. And if it's even it resembles the right, most of the time, you know, I think it's one of these uh, planned things. Uh, I forgot what they call them. Uh, but you all know what I'm talking about if you're familiar with anything in the conspiracy world. But, you know, we need to, we need to promote things like this. Teaching your boys how to, you know, use guns and things like, and weapons and things, it instills a confidence in them. And when things happen, you know, that protector instinct will kick in and they'll be ready to go. But you know what? The world's teaching them, oh, weapons are bad. You know, violence, you know, being, you know, being tough, all these things. It's always bad. No, you know what? A guy ought to know how to pound a face in. Because there's people out there that are out there trying to do harm. And somebody needs to take them down. Somebody needs to beat the tar out of them. And you know, your boys need to know that if it's necessary, that they're able to do that. And they will. They'll have that, that protector instinct in them. And uh, that's something that you've got to promote. And it's not being taught today. You know, women and children first. You don't hear them saying that kind of thing anymore. Why? Well, that's offensive and people don't even know what women are anymore. So, but you know what? I'm not going along with this culture. And I don't care, you know, what I'm saying, this type of thing, it offends a bunch of people. I really don't care because this is right. And effeminate boys, is that's just, that's not acceptable. And, you know, my boys are growing up now and it has not happened uh, with them, and it, but you know, it was it was by design. You know, they both work uh, very tough jobs physically. They're capable of a lot physically, and and I'm thankful for that. And it happened with we me purposefully going against the culture, going against the grain, not promoting the things that they're promoting, not allowing the things that you know our world is trying to to push on them. We we don't do that, and you know what, men. They should not sit like ladies. There's ways ladies sit. There's ways ladies typically cross. The, you know, you hear you hear it criticized man spreading. You know, it, these these microaggressions. You know, I do microaggressions on purpose sometimes just to offend libs. All right, when I do programs, you know, the other day I did one against the once saved always saved, uh, or the people who were against once saved always saved, and a lot of their crowd, you know, are these trendy types. And you know, I I did a microaggression. On purpose, and I left. You know, I had I had two black Bibles stacked up like that. Cause you know what, these trendy type they don't even like the old black book like this. They want these new Bibles that look like 
a regular book. And I don't know, they just, they get offended by this stuff, a lot of them. And I do. I, I purposefully, I decide, you know what, I'm going to wear a tie when I do this. Because a lot of them get offended by that. And you say, you shouldn't do that. You know, they've got to get over these things. They've got, they've got to get over these things. And you know what, I refuse to change. I refuse to not act like a man because it makes some uh, effeminate dude feel insecure. I don't care. Or because it makes some wo- it, it bothers a woman, you know. You hear about mansplaining, okay? Um, you know, ladies, don't feel bad if a man has to mansplain something to you. You're a woman, you know. You typically shouldn't be interested in all the same things that guys are interested in. But not not only are we being told we're terrible for doing that to ladies, you know. And making them feel bad, you know, what we should be saying is, why do they even feel bad about it? You know, sometimes I've walked in, my wife having conversations about lady stuff, and it's just like, okay, I'm out of here. I, I'm not interested in this. You know, sometimes at church, all of a sudden, you know, I'll sit down with my wife or something, but then I'll find myself just kind of in a conversation with a bunch of ladies, and it's just like, you know what, I'm going to go hang out with the guys. This conversation's boring. And and you know what? It's not that there's anything wrong with the ladies. You know what they're doing? They're doing what ladies do. They're talking about what ladies talk about. And they're enjoying themselves. But I'm not. You know what? Because I'm not a lady. So, you know, I don't sit like one. I don't walk like one. I don't talk like one. And teach our boys not to do that. Um, You know, I remember somebody told me one time that they went to pastor school in Hammond, Indiana. And some guy got up asking a question during a question and answer time with Brother Hiles and uh, the guy had an effeminate voice. I said, Brother Hiles just said, I don't talk to queers. Sit down. Now, some people get offended by that. But you know what? Somebody needs to tell these guys, especially if you're wanting to be a pastor in the IFB, somebody needs to tell them it's not okay to talk like a queer. That's not okay. You know what? If you've ever been chewed out for that before, thank God that somebody loved you enough to tell you what you needed to hear. That's not okay. Nobody wants nobody wants to hear from somebody like that. Nobody like that should be leading in a church. And you know what? Maybe our culture just rubbed off on you. You know, I don't I'm not even saying it means you're just this horrible person that's probably a homo. I'm saying our culture that is sick and twisted has rubbed off on you and someone needed to correct you. And, you know, maybe there's a more loving way to do it than that, you know, but at the same, at the same time, um, I think people ought to be thankful when somebody calls them out for that. So, uh, you know, we used to have something called peer pressure that, you know, or uh, that uh, could be bad, but sometimes it was good. You know, there was a time when, uh, you know, if as a guy, you know, you dress like a girl you were going to get made fun of, maybe even beat up. And, you know, we call that bullying today. But, you know, it's better than growing up to be a drag queen. You know, it's better than growing up and being a you-know-what. So, um, you know, we probably need to get back to some of this stuff. So we've got to, but we've got to teach it. Our world is actively teaching something different. Our world is actively promoting and putting forth just the scum of society and that's not okay we've got literally today uh, a world that's so twisted where men keep getting woman of the year in different things and uh, you know you'd think women would be upset about that and some are but you know not in the news media apparently but um, you know so you need to teach your boys to talk like a man you need, you need to teach them to look people in the eye Young people today do not know how to look men in the eye. And, you know, I guess there you could say there's some benefits, you know, if you are an actual male to some of these things today, because it's I've learned it's really easy to intimidate people today. Not that I want to intimidate people, but I've had situations where I've kind of needed to. And it's really easy. And and um you know, so for example, you know, and so I, I've learned, you know, over the years, I've learned some things about body language and just reading people and stuff like that. And I found myself in situations before where 
um, you know, I knew things could potentially get aggressive. Uh, I had a situation a year, uh, a year or so ago where I was out soul winning and I, I, I was by myself. I was an odd man. I just went by myself and I started talking to a guy who I'll, I'll tell the short version of the story, but he, um, and eventually I came up in the conversation. He, uh, made a reference to that pastor over, uh, in rock falls that was against the homos. And he didn't realize it was me. He was talking to. And it was one of those things where uh, I just told him, uh, that guy you're talking about, actually, that's me. And I just, and I'll never forget the look in his face. He had a look of shock and anger because, you know, I think he was shocked because he didn't realize that it was me. But then, too, because uh, he did not like my position on things because apparently he had a daughter that was a, you know what? And so uh, when he did that, you know, I just, I was about ready to leave. And I, but I didn't want to give off uh, any indication, you know, of weakness or anything. Cause I thought, you know, he might end up coming after me. So I just kind of stepped up to him. I just looked him right in the eye and didn't back down. And he couldn't even, he, he wasn't even able to look at me. He wasn't, a, he wasn't capable of maintaining eye contact. And you know what? And so just me looking him in the eye like that, I was able to maintain a dominant position. <laughs> and uh, he ne you know, he never messed with me or tried anything with me, even though you know I'm on his property and everything, and he kind of has the advantage in a lot of ways. And I'm telling you, you know, just things like that, you've got to teach your boys to be man enough to look people in the eye. But you know why a lot of people can't look people in the eye too? It's just shame. You know, it's because uh, they're not honest, because they're not genuine when they're talking to someone. That's not okay. You need to teach your boys to have a firm handshake. A dead fish handshake is not okay. If your boy has a dead fish handshake, you know, you need to get uh, one of those, you know, hand exercises that you squeeze and make him do those things every day until he gets a grip like a man. You know, you need to make him go do some work that will naturally help him get those things you know so you need to teach them to to be honest enough where they can tell the truth with respect they can do it with boldness so they're not afraid to look people in the eye and that's the key to not being afraid of looking people in the eye is just be honest just be just tell the truth and you have nothing to be ashamed of but you know our world today they're being told not to be ashamed of things or even told to have pride in things that should shame anyone and would shame any normal person. But let me tell you, they can say pride all they want. They can even wear, they can even fly a pride flag, but it doesn't change the fact that just internally, there's going to be a natural shame for wicked behavior, for effeminate behavior. And you know what? They're not going to be able to just look someone in the eye. And if you can't, if, if your boy is not capable of ever looking someone in the eye, there's probably something wrong. You know, there's there's either some shame there for some reason, and he needs you need to fix whatever it is he's ashamed of, uh, but or two, he's just a real pansy. And that's not okay either. You gotta teach him to toughen up, you know, and uh, maybe you need to have him do boxing classes where he's gotta go look somebody in the eye and he's gotta keep his eye on somebody who's gonna try to punch him in the face. You know, uh, maybe maybe that's what they need, but Teach him to tell the truth with respect and boldness. I like guys like Nathan the prophet, who wasn't afraid to look at the king and say, Thou art the man. Who wasn't, you know, John the Baptist, who wasn't afraid to say, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. You know, guys like uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who he, they told the king, We're not going to worship your image. We're not, we're not, and he said, We're not careful to answer thee. You know, he, they were respectful to the king, but they told him, This is how it's going to be. All right, because these were. These were real men. And and not only were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego real men who had uh, boldness like a lot of men don't have. These were guys that were actually made eunuchs, the Bible says. And they were still manly than a lot of Baptist preachers today are. You know, thank God for people like that. So uh, teach your boys to work like men. It's okay. You know, you hear all this stuff about child labor. And obviously, I don't believe in corporations taking advantage of children, you know, 
and treating them bad stuff like that. But let me tell you something. As parents, you are not hurting your children by having them work. You are not hurting your children by having them do chores. You are not hurting by making them sweat and letting them get tired. You're not hurting them in that. You're hurting them if you don't do that. You know, you're hurting them. I remember, I've, I've told this story before, when we went to a graduation one time. It was a graduation. It was in May. It was pretty hot that day. It was a little hot. It was sunny. And they had the graduation out. It was outdoors. And in during that graduation, there were these little, uh, I was standing, uh, I wasn't standing in the bleachers because I had one of the kids was a baby at the time. I think it was Lana. And so I'm holding her, I'm, I'm, I'm walking around, I'm holding her, carrying her in the sun, in the heat. I'm fine. And then I'm just seeing one after another moms taking these little fat boys these little pale fat boys taking them out of the bleaches leaving them there looking all flushed like they were about to die of heat exhaustion and stuff and i thought you know what a shame my boys were fine out there my girls were fine out there like that but these stereotypical gamer types they couldn't handle it that is not okay it, that is not okay. These kids weren't born that way. Most of those kids were probably sitting there with a PlayStation in their, or the PSP in their hands or the uh, Nintendo DS, you know, while, while they're out there. That, that's, how, that's how they are all the time, and it's pathetic. So you need to teach them to work like a man. You need to teach them to endure trials. They need to uh, learn how to, you know, listen to people. And listen to instructions. If they're going to school, they need to learn how to listen to the teacher. And they need to be able to handle being chewed out. And mom and dad's got to stop trying to stick up for them every time they get in some kind of trouble with somebody. If, if your kid's out of line, he needs to be dealt with. One of these days, he's going to get a job and he's going to have a boss that's going to yell at him. And you know what? You're not going to be able to report him to the principal. You've, you've got to be, uh, you've got to teach them how to deal with things. And you know, things sometimes they might get treated unfair sometime. They're gonna have problems they need to deal with. But you know what, guys today, they're so weak. They are so incapable of literally just any hardship. And it, it, what it is doing to our culture is devastating. And think about this you're doing all the, the, our culture as a whole, and I'm speaking about our culture as a whole. They're doing everything they can to just remove any trials and difficulties from young men. But yet at the same time, we are the most mentally unstable generation that we've ever had. The, the mental health issues are just off the charts. It's absolutely horrible how many young men are on all these anxiety medications and you know needing therapists and all these different things. We have not helped by making things easy on them, not just physically, but mentally, you know, and they need to deal with some stress. They need to deal with some hard times. And, you know, I'll, I'll, and, and sometimes Christians are the worst about this, you know, as Christians, you know, you, um, especially too, if you, maybe you weren't raised in a Christian home, but a lot of times Parents, you know, they think about all the tough things that they went through as a child and as a teenager. And then they make a mistake of doing everything they can to make sure those their children don't have those hardships. But, you know, those hardships are what helped you develop the character that you have that got you to where you are today. And if you're not careful, you're going to raise a child who never develops any character. You know, and I'm not saying you make them just suffer for no reason and things like that. But, you know, you need to have enough wisdom to understand what it is that they need and what it is that um, will help them uh, gain the character that they need to have. And uh, a lot of people are, ju are just missing that and they don't understand that. And I get that. Again, you know, our, our culture is really messed up. You know, and if you grew up, if you were raised, you know, like a typical American, you're going to be pretty confused about this, but that's why, again, that's why we have church. That is why we have church because it is a place where you can get around some godly people. And, and, and in a good church, you're going to have 
new Christians, but you're going to also have some more mature Christians too. And you can see what they did. You can watch what they're doing. You know, there's going to be, uh, in, a, in a typical church, you know, if you're a young family raising kids, there's probably going to be some parents who have kids that are older than your kids. And if they're succeeding, watch what they're doing. If they're failing, watch what they're doing. That was I'm, a, a lot of how I parent is from me learning from good people did and learning from bad people did. I'd watch some parents that were failing miserably and I would say, I'm not doing that with my kid. But then I would see other parents that were doing a great job. It's like, you know what? We're doing that with our kids. And you know what? Parents who work their kids hard always turned out better kids than the ones who removed all hardships from them. Parents who were constantly, I worked in a Christian school for six years. Parents who were constantly defending their child who was doing a sorry job in school turned out crummy kids. Ones who, uh, you know, would back us up when we were dealing with them, they turned out the better kids. I watched that, you know, all, all those years. And I, le I learned some things from that, that that helped me out a lot. And so, um, I, you know, again, so back to kind of where we started, you have to uh, recognize the fact that this manliness, this real biblical manliness, a toughness, a physical toughness, an attitude of being a, protect, a protector and a provider, somebody who is of strong moral character, somebody who... Uh, is willing to stand up for what is right and that's willing to stand against the evil. That is not being promoted in our world today. The opposite is being promoted. We're all compromise is always being glorified in everything. Being effeminate, always being glorified in everything. And a lot of what uh, you should have is being called toxic masculinity. And there are some things, and I talked about it before, associated with toxic masculinity that's bad. Okay, uh, I, I get that and go back and listen to my episode on that. I'm not going to rehash all of that, but you, you've got to your boys are not going to learn these things naturally. You're going to have to make a conscious effort to not only train them in what's right, but also show them what is wrong. And if you are, if your kid is getting a healthy dose of the Disney Channel every day, you're going to have a lot to work on because that stuff's going to rub off on them. If you're letting them listen to whatever the modern pop culture music is, you're going to have all kinds of problems with him. If you're letting them hang around kids that are like this, they're going to have all kinds of problems. And I'm not, and I'm not even one too that's for like just completely isolating your kids and only have them around those that are perfect. Uh, but you know, you got to have some balance there too where, um, you know, I think it's good to have your kids and uh, around others and see if they're able to take a stand against stuff. But obviously, you know, you you know, you got to have some limits there. And that's probably an episode for another day. Because uh, you know, again, we don't want to isolate them. But we uh, and and one of the reasons we don't want to isolate them is because they need to know what's out there, so they can know how to stand against it, and. Um, because it is, it's, it, it's from the time Tommy, my, my oldest was little, it blew my mind, the stuff that he would pick up on, you know, as much as, uh, you know, we would shelter him and, you know, he wasn't watching, you know, all the television shows that everybody was, but just the things that kids would pick up on just from going to stores, seeing, you know, seeing the advertisements places. I was amazed at all the things that he would, that he would pick up on. And there is, there's an active conscious effort to promote things that are wicked. And so you're going to have to uh, understand if you live in America, you're going to have to teach them different. You're going to have to make a conscious effort and uh, you need to get it done because being effeminate is not okay. It's a serious sin. And, and it does, if, it goes too far, uh, you know, you could potentially have a sodomite you raise. And no parent wants that. You know, I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But folks, 
the their, the recruiting tactics that they're using are working, and 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 they're working, they're working for a reason, and uh, I think it's our responsibility as fathers to protect them from that. And you know what? I don't believe the best way to protect them from it is to just hide them from it. I think it's best to fight it. And I think that's where we are. And I think a lot of Christians today and a lot of Baptists, they have gone into just hiding mode. They've gone into, well, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to try to take a stand. And I know that sounds good, but you know, if you're not advancing, okay, if you're not fighting back, eventually they're going to wear you down and they're going to get you. And you know what? I, I think the key is we've got to fight back against this stuff. And pastors who aren't fighting back against it, who are just being vague in their preaching or not getting specific, have youth groups full of effeminate teens. Again, I saw one picture today. The dudes were so effeminate in this youth group. And the girls, some of the girls, look more masculine than the guys. I mean, these are like teenage girls in a Baptist church that look like full-blown you-know-whats. And I'm like, how, how is this happening in a Baptist church? How are, how are kids comfortable showing up like this in a Baptist church? I'll tell you why. Because nobody's saying anything against it. Nobody's fighting it. They're just, they're just ignoring it and hoping if they're just sweet enough that these kids are just going to you know, magically just want to serve the Lord and not be like the world. That is not going to happen. And uh, we've got to get active in this fight against this the queer, disgusting, effeminate culture, uh, especially for our boys' sake. And dads, ultimately, this is on you. And the, la and the last thing, one of the reasons this is such a big problem today, too, is because such a large percentage of young men are growing up in homes without fathers. And um, listen, you moms out there that are trying to raise boys right without a dad in the home, God bless you. I, 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 I believe you can do it. But let me tell you this. Uh, you need to do what you have to do to get them around some godly men. You better be in a good church. You better be in a good church that's got some strong male figures there that will be a good example to your son. You have to do that. You must do that. And and even and, and guys, even if you're uh, you, you are in the home, you know you, your boys. You know the, the more the more the merrier. You know, and I, I'm thankful. I have a church that's got a lot of alpha male types in it. I, I'm thankful for that. I want my boys to be around as much of that as possible because. That's what I want for them. I'm glad we've got a lot of hardworking men that like manly things. You know, I'm glad. I've never heard the men in our church get together uh, talking about their latest manicure. <laughs> I've never, I, I, you know, they, I've never, you know, I've not heard our men ever get together talking about, you know, where they can go and get their hair permed. They don't talk about that kind of stuff. Not at our church. And, you know, and I do when I typically walk up on groups of men in our church having conversations about things, I'm typically pleased at the subject matter that I hear. And it's it's not stuff that I would mind my boys standing there and listening in on. But some of you, your boys are around the total opposite. And you better do something about that. You really better do something about it. You better get your head out of the sand and look at what's going on in this world. See what's being promoted and advertised. And ask yourself, do you want that for your boys? And when they're little, it's real easy to kind of guide them and direct them in these areas. But when they become teenagers, it gets it gets a little more difficult. And you better, and those are some very impressionable years. And you better make sure you keep a close eye on things. And you know what? Don't be afraid to uh, use strong language about these things. In your home and we have always used very derogatory terms uh, towards effeminate people in our home and you say you shouldn't do that I want my boys to know that 
that kind of thing is not okay. I'm not going to paint it as not so bad. We're, I'm, I'm going to paint it in the worst way possible because it is that bad. These are very serious sins. And so you, you should do stuff like that. You should make it look bad. And, you know, uh, you know, my dad, he would typically, you know, the, the terms that I remember hearing most of the time, uh, growing up about just effeminate guys, uh, was fairy was one that he would talk about a lot. Um, you know, he, he would call people stuff like Nancy and stuff or Sally. Um, well, I'm trying to think of some of the other terms, uh, that he would use, but it was always, it was always derogatory. And, um, you've been told you're not supposed to do that but you know what the generations that raise men all did that and i do i I think i think you need to do it too and um yeah i can't even tell you some of the things that uh the way some of my family members would steer me away from (laughs) uh, you know certain things that i shouldn't have been going towards because some of that might be a little too offensive but um those are funny stories I won't tell on the internet uh, for, for another time. But, uh, you know, you need to do things like that. You are their father. You are to be an influence. And I'm all for using creative and memorable, memorable ways to do that. And I'm thankful for the areas where my dad did that. Because, you know, I can't imagine anything worse than being a queer. I, I, can't, I can't imagine that. And it's happening a lot today. And folks, they're not born that way. They are, they are not born that way. They cannot prove that. They are trying so hard to, you know, find the gay gene or whatever. They can't do it. That people end up that way through getting their minds warped, through recruitment tactics and things. And my dad actively worked against that stuff and he and he and he he did it in a day when it wasn't near as bad but um you know growing up i thought it was super bad in the world the way my dad talked but and it was bad he was right to freak out about it uh well all the stuff that was going on but boy it is so much worse now so when i think about the stuff that my dad did it's like i probably got to go to a greater extreme you know people have asked me before you know what made me so homophobic or whatever. It's like, I was raised that way. And, and I, I'm, I'm thankful for it. And I, I've raised my family that way. And I think all men ought to do the same thing. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to shut that down now, but I hope this was a help to you. Uh, sorry it wasn't live. I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but um, I'm going out of town uh, tomorrow. This is Monday for me. And then next week, I don't know if I'll have a program for next week because I'm going to be out of state next week uh, preaching at a camp. And so um, I'm hoping I'll have time to maybe record something. But there may not be a program next week. If there's not, it is because I am out of state. And um, But we will uh, for sure be back in a couple weeks. So I do appreciate everyone watching. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us. And make sure you uh, like and share this. And get the word out. Let's get back to promoting manliness. It is a good thing. And so God bless you. We'll see you all next time.